reading the Genesis chapters, I come to this theorizing and speculation about Cain. Uh, in the following video, I'll try to point out uh, and expand on um, these uh, points, and that is that Cain's mark is the is the Hindu tilaka. Um, his background as a crop worker, a murderer of his own brother, um, eventually led him to develop teachings of karma and realization of karma. East of Eden, where he was banished to, is what in the ancient times was or became the Indus Valley civilization. And that's where Cain ended up or uh, was involved in uh, developing. Cain was thus the founder of Eastern religions um, that are more based on uh, self-realization rather than the more uh, classical Abrahamic uh, obedience and punishment. First of all, from my own studies, it seems the Bible was an updated version of something that was there before it was written, as the many stories are to be found in Sumerian writings, Sumerian belief systems and such, just as they are to be found in Norse mythology or the Bible um, events are to be found in the others, because which of them came first, it's is uh, is not really known and uh, there are so many um overlapping stories and s symbolism that from my perspective they all sort of relate to something um that goes way back beyond in time any of them and that they are sort of um clusters or fragments or um stories that were sort of made to survive in order to um, not forget what's happened to humanity way, way, way back in history. I find it therefore very possible that all, all of these stories are remnants and altered versions of even more ancient stories. And um, one should not confuse God with capital G with the God or gods in the various scriptures. You have to remember that throughout time stories change and gaps occur and stories are uh, made to fill in those gaps. So everything is rewritten in a way but some key elements, key symbols remain and um, to map out all of their interconnections is, is a great, great project. Uh, but in this case, I, I will just focus on the connection between Cain and perhaps e Eastern religion, how it was formed and uh, from what background it was formed. So let's assume when uh, Cain left Eden or, or, or uh, when he was banished from the Garden of Eden, he set out to another place where there must have been already some people uh, since God supposedly, according to Genesis, made all humans and races uh, on the same day. Then Eden must have been some sort of a base, uh, a village, a town, um, at least populated in a sense um, or perhaps it was a protected special area uh, and maybe even part of a greater um, nation or civilization uh, as I believe it might have been in um, the Indus Valley civilization, civilization around that area anyway Cain uh, got to the land of Nod which lies in the east of Eden. Uh, in this case we think of it as somewhere in the Indus Valley civilization. As uh, Cain dealt with crops and uh, able with animals and after the murder of his brother Cain got the mark um, supposedly what I believe to be the um, the Hindu mark 
Um, if God wanted the mark to protect him, then the forehead would be a good place to put it on. So perhaps in the story, um, Cain got this mark for a special reason uh, and as a special function. So it was visible on his forehead. And if you think about it, the mark and the Hindu mark, um, it's, it's, it's kind of aesthetic. Um, it doesn't sort of, um, um, it, it's not like a, a brutal insignia or something. It's, it's a dot, uh, dot uh, which I assume to be the Hindu Tilaka, because as he had this mark, uh, the dot, supposedly the Hindu Tilaka, and he came to the land of Nod, meaning the Indus Valley civilization, um, that symbol stayed on and um, later was adapted as, um, you know, uh, the Hindus still have it today and it represents the third eye and um, you have lots of connotations with that symbol. Cain says that, um, to quote, uh, my punishment is greater than I can bear. So this is the interesting bit. As uh, one of my key theories here is that he developed the, the typical Eastern type of religious and philosophical thinking in, uh, in awakening, in realizing, you know, one action leads to another, the law of karma, um, and, you know, um, as much as a universal, universal compassion as you can have. So, could he could he have been the forefather of of all those religions, uh, Buddhism, Jainism, and uh, and all all those that fall in between? I mean, they are so old, and uh, um, they 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 go under various names. And uh, as Buddhism evolved from Hinduism, sort of Buddha was a Hindu. Uh, we can say that in a way, you know, let's assume Cain eventually also is the root from which Buddhism uh, was formed, at least Cain's uh, teachings and Cain's um, realizations. This is different from the Abrahamic religions, which are more based on obedience uh, and punishment. So um, the typical aspect of Eastern religion is based on self-realization. And if we imagine the life of Cain, um, you know, he begins with a profound mistake, I mean, killing his own brother. And uh, from that, he sort of gets this mark, he gets banished, um, but he's still alive and the mark is not some sort of um, something that degrades his appearance. Instead, he undergoes a journey, uh, an awakening and... Um, if we look at some, if we keep in mind the difference between the Abrahamic and Eastern religions, um, we can see where, where his path leads. This torment of having done such a wrong action and lived such an imperfect uh, life is very different for Cain if you compare him to uh, Buddha, Jesus or somebody else because they all sort of have a um, you know, uh, unstained, um, immaculate sort of uh, childhood. We don't know much about it. It's, you know, it's, it's perfect, <laughs> if we can say so. While Cain really um, dwells from the, from the dirty um, ground in the lake and eventually he blooms up with realizations, which we also can relate the symbol of the lotus and why it's so common in Eastern religion as it symbolizes something rising up from the dirty mud and eventually, you know, coming up to the to the light, to the realization, to, <clears throat> to the ultimate uh, facing of oneself. Looking uh, closely at the Indian flag, we see the symbol of the uh, ancient king uh, Ashoka who was a brutal conqueror and murderer and, um, you know, suddenly he snapped and began to be a Buddhist and um, to 
teach sort of compassion and um, you know he p- put out these pillars across his lands um, which can be um, in our terms something close to um, the human rights or something um, <clears throat> one can also say that he used the Buddhism as a political tool um, if we you know because uh, by with, with religion you can conquer easily um, and uh, eventually he became uh, he withdraw, withdrew himself and became an enlightened person uh, the story goes something al- along that and um, you know we can see Cain in that also and uh, from this we can actually um, you know may- m- m- maybe come to the conclusion that um, Cain's path was of one of um, you know a human coming to terms with himself it wasn't that much of any god revealing himself or giving him a stone uh, with something on it or you know burning bushes or taking him through desert or anything like moses or any other uh, story uh, but he was more of a, maybe a humanistical approach you know realizing wh- what he has done and improving and uh, getting better from that and um, if we keep on this uh, theory and speculation we might consider that the Hindu Tilaka then is still the mark of Hinduism you know of Eastern religion basically in any school book if you come to the chapter of Eastern religion there is always um, a woman or a man or, or a group of people with the with uh, Tilaka and uh, so that's still here that's still present so Cain's mark that God gave him is still present among the <clears throat> people who practice uh, Hinduism and such and um, vegetarianism compassion and karma which are you know key concepts in a way in um, Jainism Hinduism Buddhism um, come from this as he was a uh, he grew vegetables he committed a, a terrible I mean horrible crime killing his brother and he evolved from that so he he realized that um, ahimsa the law of um, um, total compassion for animals plants and humans is something to be to revere and uh, that's why the Eastern religions have such a focus on those aspects in theory not always not everywhere um, and um, the place where he developed this was the Indus Valley civilization the land of Nod east of Eden now how much east we don't know but um, this is my speculation that it was somewhere in that area and thus to get back to the uh, points I began with um, Cain was the founder of Eastern philosophy religion and um, all these key concepts that we associate uh, associate with uh, Hinduism Buddhism Jainism and all that this was the presentation um, I this was all based on a blog post I did uh, let me see when was it uh, in um, in August two, 2014 and uh, since then as you know people found it and uh, contribute to some interesting facts and um, this video I want to um, I want to sort of include the basic ideas of my speculation and some of the contributing uh, facts which um, um, uh, people in in the comment section um, um, shared which were very interesting there are many interesting facts like uh, Yogendra uh, pointed out for example Rama is uh, epic uh, is an epic and legendary person or God or Lord of for Hindu Indians who uh, and he founded uh, Malhua Malhua 
also occurred in the Mesopotamia, civil, Mesopotamian civilization as a trade place in the east, where um, we hear the word Ram, it's very similar to Abraham. And as we know, names change uh, when they venture from uh, <clears throat> one geographical place to another. Another comment came from Isana, who pointed out uh, once again these name relations which you can have in front of you but but you miss them uh, and it's simply that uh, Aryavrat uh, could be the same as Euphrat, Euphrates river in Iraq. Aryavrat is a name which combines the language of Arya and Sanskrit, uh, a native language of India back back in the days and uh, in India all the gods were considered to be Aryans uh, uh, the region now Iran uh, the name Iran comes from Aryan so as you see and hear everything is really connected and if, if you consider how much for example Norse mythology is connected to the ancient Abrahamic uh, mythology and how the uh, Middle Eastern uh, Abrahamic mythology is connected to the um, East and uh, Mesopotamian uh, really one can wonder as Mesopotamia came before the Abrahamic um, tradition uh, which one came first maybe maybe things were re uh, rewritten who knows um, but but everything is really interconnected and if you go from um, Scandinavia, the north, to the Middle East, to the to the sort of Indus Valley region, uh, you have the Aryan languages, basically. And um, yeah, th th there are so many things to point out here. And um, I just hope by this video, um, uh, you c you can get some more um, perspective and uh, interest in this area, and. Uh, point out to facts and uh, interesting um, details, further details about this perhaps. Feel free to go uh, to the blog post and uh, read the comment section and uh, have your input there or uh, here on YouTube. But uh, I think there's really more to this and uh, together we can sort of um, make a slightly more complete uh, image of all of this. It's very interesting uh, and uh, it, it's not that explored and uh, there are so many dots to connect here. Thank you for listening and uh, take care. All the best.